So this is the five minute lesson plan for academics working in higher education uh, who deliver lectures, uh, whether that's a, a short series or a one-off where you might fill the gap with students that you've never met before. Now before I start and go through this process in the next eight or nine minutes, with a bit of practice, so pause and play the video, but with a bit of practice you could master this thought process in less than five minutes and I advocate that uh, lesson planning is a thought process it's not filling in a form or filling in all these pretty boxes so I want to walk you through the template in a clockwise fashion starting in the top left uh, and how you could uh, reduce your anxiety when you are filling in uh, a lecture for students that you might never have met before uh, using someone else's content uh, and that's quite a difficult thing to do so, so step one what's happened before where are we now? Um, very simple questions to ask to help you get to the right place. Then uh, what do you know about your students? Now you might not have no data, you might know how many students are there. Um, it might be irrelevant whether it's five or fifty or maybe a hundred. Um, at what point in the curriculum are they is critical. Um, also just logistically, um, what does the room look like? You know, is it um, group tables, lecture theatre style, cabaret seats? You know, these things make a big difference for your delivery, but also student participation. Um, so once we've got those kind of simple things in place, you can then bring together the big picture. Right, here's where the students are. This is what I need them to do. And this is what I need to do to help them get there. Um, so using this plan you can help achieve that process so that's the thought process to begin with again the rest of it is a thought process too but you might want to practice scribbling it down by pausing and playing this video to help you deliver high quality lectures so I'll give you um, an example objective uh, now in the health area so I'm going to use something from my own experience in the world of design um, but when we look at research when teachers are clear and precise they use command words, so connectives, um, and they focus on learning rather than doing. There's a high chance that students achieve better outcomes. So a simple methodology for this is looking at a we will, so that, so I will, X, Y, Z, so that, X, Y, Z. So I'll give you one example here. I would like students to understand anthropometric data so that we can apply this when designing prosthetic limbs. So there's just a simple example. You can use that uh, for uh, that framework for your own particular lecture, but that's a nice way to just frame an objective. And what it allows you to do is offer some, some clarity in terms of where you, what success criteria or target for a, a want of another word, or is it in terms of where you, what you're trying to do and achieve with them. Now the difficulty for you watching this is if you're delivering a lecture and it's uh, in a, uh, a venue you've never been before, you've not met the students, you're perhaps teaching someone else's content, that's quite a, a difficult thing. So you, you, you might be struggling with how do I adapt the resources or all of a sudden you've been given 120 slides. So using this little resource calculator, let's just work out how achievable the content is because that's often where you can be skipping through 120 slides if we assume a 60 minute lecture theory, pe pe uh, period and the transitions over here so five minutes to arrive four or five sequences five or ten minutes at the end to ask questions and to move on and um, you can see it's a great challenge so let's assume I'm delivering a lecture I'm given 120 slides let's divide up by 55 minutes give or take moving uh, to the room on arrival and then leaving we do the maths very simply. That means 24 transitions, so looking at five periods of 10 minutes, that means I need to get through 2.2 slides per minute. Now, if you think about that uh, in terms of you sitting receiving that information, you can see that it's, as a student receiving that information, it's gonna be very difficult for you to retain any information. Uh, and if you are working on a methodology where you think you have to get through all the slides, or work out what's important and what could be avoided and maybe what can you cut out then you can kind of see um, you know I'm not giving you a kind of slide principle of the ideal number set, set of slides uh, but certainly having 120 is not going to be possible in 60 minutes so you're looking at the key information here you know I, I you know I've been uh, teaching for a long time 
uh, largely 11 to 18 students, but now working with adults and training teachers all across the country. Um, you're looking at a good 10 or 20 slides per hour maximum to help information be retained so that people have enough time to discuss, etc. But that's in other settings. This is for a lecture where you might be delivering uh, from the front and people sit, take notes, those kind of things. So that, that's quite critical here. Um, things that you can think about. Now, I've just filled this in as an example. You know, this will be dependent on what you're delivering. But, you know, so I might start, so prosthetic limbs, anthropometric data. So what do we know so far? So let's look at some history. Let's look at some information from the scheme of work. Ask a few questions in class. What is anthropometrics? How does this apply in the world of designing prosthetic limbs? Here's some handouts. Uh, a link to some slides online because I can't show them all right now. But there's a full set of slides behind the scenes. I'm just showing you a, a brief summary. So that's, let's say, the first five to ten minutes once people have arrived. Transition to two. So again, as a lecture, there's probably very little movement in the room, but I might want to test uh, people's understanding. Now, how you facilitate questions is, a, is another matter. And I'm going to show you a resource right at the very end that you might want to dig out on teachertoolkit.co.uk. But how can I develop understanding to make sure that students leave knowing what anthropometric data is, why it's important, and how this is applied in design and prosthetics. So, you know, asking all sorts of questions, considering resources, equipment, you know, I might have a prosthetic limb, they might pass it around, who knows? But, you know, think about how can recap knowledge, test retrieval, I might want to ask some questions, um, and just test what people know, if you're, you're brave enough to get a bit of feedback in the room. Again, context depends on how many people you've got in, but, you know, as soon as you open it up for lots of questions, there's a danger that the questions over, uh, take over the delivery and one person's uh, desire to get more information from you might restrict the rest of the people in the room. So it's a process where you might want to test, synthesize what you know, what you don't know. So I'm going to give, give you these questions shortly, but then evaluate, you know, you're delivering a one-off lecture. How can I evaluate what we've covered in the last 40 or 50 minutes and then ask various questions? So I'm going to pause and just skip to a second slide. This is a question matrix uh, and you can find this on teachertoolkit.co.uk as a blog and a resource. But this is a nice way to frame questions regardless of what place in a scheme of work or curriculum you are. And I know you're delivering the lecture, but uh, by me asking a question from the left here and uh, attaching it to something from the top, I could ask what is? what has, what can, what should, what would, what will, and what might. As we get a bit more into synthesis and evaluation, asking why does, why has, why can, why would, why will, how might. So it allows you to pitch questions um, and challenge, and you might want to target these questions to various groups of people, and so on and so forth. So pause that, have a good look, create your own, or dig one out of my site on teachertoolkit.co.uk. So to finish off, all the transitions, a number of slides, what do I want students to achieve in this one-off lecture? At the end, before I send them away, how am I going to recap? So how am I feeling? What are they feeling? I might want to ask for some feedback, you know, if I want to reflect and be better at delivering or, or you know, teaching in these one-off circumstances. But by that, using that question matrix, you can engage more participation. And there's lots of different methods that you can use. Um, that allow you to engage with students very quickly to get some feedback to tailor where at what point you move on to the next um, part of the lesson. Now that's quite high stakes but something simple such as thumbs up, thumbs down or a bit of interactive software helps. And then to finish off, you know, even better if, so less slides, test what you know. So evaluate your, your own performance, what would you do differently, what made you feel uncomfortable you know, how was the participation in, in, in the lecture itself? If you don't ask the students, then you're not going to know. Um, so in my experience of observing tens of thousands of lessons from teachers, you know, particularly working in challenging situations with, uh, you know, 30 teenagers, um, it's important to get feedback and adapt to meet the needs of your students so that you can uh, deliver higher quality content. So I'm going to finish off following up, you know, use Twitter. So for me, with this video, hashtag five min plan on all platforms and you can see examples. You may want to add your initials to the end of this hashtag, so five min plan for me McGill, and then I create a specific channel 
where every student in my lecture can connect and feedback and discuss. Um, or you might want to use an academic platform such as Blackboard or Moodle or whatever it would be. So that's it. Um, pause and play. Uh, connect with me online at Teacher Toolkit. Um, hope you get on really well. You know, the biggest challenge for you is picking up uh, a set of slides that are not yours, uh, meeting the needs in the particular part of a curriculum. This is a thought process, not filling in the form. So, so print off the form, have a little go at the next lecture uh, you're delivering, and I wish you all the best of luck.